They, they were really very good in general, and I'll do a short lecture here, and then we'll give uh, the exams out. Um, I'll, I'll shut off the TV, and, we'll, and I don't think wasting TV time to hand out exams is very good. Um, so um, the uh, questions were, I mean, generally self-explained. If anybody got, you know, most people, when they got something wrong, they got something on the divide by W type answer. Um, I got a few constructed answers there, creative answers. Uh, um, in general, what you're doing when you're dividing by W is you're actually performing a projection, right? An oblique projection on things. Um, and that's it. Um, and uh, the last one, the only hint I have on the last one was that it, it, a Z buffer is an array, right? That corresponds to the pixels in your window. Okay, many people didn't start it kind of said a Z buffer is this and you know and really didn't get that. In general though I was really happy with these exams. The uh, scores were really good and you'll probably be really happy with them too. Um, the second thing is there's this wonderful fund here at UC Davis called the Dean Witter Fund and I don't know if any of you uh, have heard about this and it started in 1970 something as take a faculty member to lunch where students could get some money to take a faculty member to lunch, and they, it would reimburse them for the, cost, for the cost of lunch. And it's gone through many iterations over the years. Um, I, was, I initially discovered it when a student in my class who couldn't get as much time as he wanted in office hours would take me out to lunch on this fund, which he could do three times during the quarter, and he would get me for an office hour basically by himself that way. Okay, and would and could get me, but it's morphed into uh, several other things during the quarter, and now the instructor can get money to take the class out. So uh, basically, what what uh, we call it, we've been using this for years here. We call it office hours at the pub um, for us because once I couldn't get anybody to come to my office, and I said, hey, I'll be at the pub for my office hours today, and there'll be four pitchers of beer on the table, and I can't drink that much beer. And I had 60 people show up, okay? And I couldn't get anybody to come to, come to my office. So uh, we started this out, it's called Office Hours at the Pub. We're gonna hold it at Sudwork this Friday night, okay? This Friday night at seven o'clock. Um, so come, I've got money to buy, I can't buy you beer, um, they won't let me do you that, but I can buy chicken, all the chicken strips I want, okay? <laughs> and so uh, I'll buy the, uh, the, the munchies at the table, or no, I won't, Dean Witter will buy the munchies at the table, and we can all uh, um, do it. I'll answer any question you want to ask during the time we're there. You want me to ask that even you might not ask me in my office hours, okay? Go ahead. Um, we figured out when our final is. Yes, that was the next thing I was, you beat me to it just barely. Um, according to the computer science department, the final is on Monday at 10.30, and it is incorrect, right? The final, if you look at the UC Davis website, the final is on Friday, okay? So I will officially change the, uh, um, the due date of the assignment to Friday, okay? Uh, during the, so it's due at the end of the final exam period on Friday. And uh, if you want, I'll, ch I'm, I'll go back to the office today and change the, uh, I think, uh, I'll change the actual assignment so it reflects the actual due date, okay? Um, please be warned that because it's Friday, we cannot accept it after, I think it's Saturday at noon, Saturday at 5 p.m., right? So you, get, you can get only one late day on this assignment. Okay, we can't accept it after Saturday at, at, at that time because the quarter ends. Right, and they want me to get grades in. Um, so that's the, that's the kicker here, is that you only get one late day. So that if you don't get this last, uh, last thing done, right, do something on it, right, even minimally on it, write a readme statement saying how much you got done, how much, right, uh, what your problems were, why you didn't get it done, etc. And write a real readme to the grader, because the grader's probably gonna be me on this one, okay? And, uh, um, you know, so you don't just hand in something that doesn't work, okay? That's not, that, that doesn't get a real good score out of Ken, okay? okay so in, in this way, I have to give you some partial credit, but uh, so it's, it'll probably be the real due date will be like Saturday at 5 o'clock, okay? And also, with this being that it's late in finals week, please don't blow your other, all your other finals working on this. Okay, kind of uh, sit back and manage all the other finals you have as well as this one. 
right? So that uh, I've had people, uh, you know, in in um, in evaluation say, hey, uh, you know, well, he, you know, he gave us an assignment. I had to blow all my other finals in order to do this one. Well, you know, there's there's some management there to do. So um, please do that. So okay, there's there's exams which I'll hand out in a few minutes. There's uh, office hours at the pub, um, which is at uh, is at seven o'clock on Friday at Sudwerk. Everybody know where Sudwerk is, and uh, we'll have a little section off on the side. And part uh, some of you are also in my iPhone class. Uh, the iPhone class will also be there um, on this one. And uh, then the final is really on Friday. So I will give you all the way till Friday. Go ahead. Um. Wednesday and Friday lectures are not on this week, right? My uh, plane gets back at 1.05 at the Sacramento airport on Friday, and I have a feeling that I will not be at class. Uh, I will not be here in time. Okay, so Wednesday and Friday lectures are not on. You've got plenty to do. Uh, are you taking this last project on the CSIF as well? Uh, do you know how we have to make it compile on a certain system? What system do you want it to work on? <laughs> yeah, it'll have to be on the CSIF. Okay. Anything else from anyone? Okay. Today's lecture is um, I've got a, what what you've done this quarter in this class is sampled basically the beginning of a huge field. Okay, uh, on the field of computer graphics. Right, and the computer graphics related things is enormous. And to tell, show you how enormous it is, there's a, um, if you're a, when you join the computer science community, when you really start to join, there's a professional society, inaptly named the ACM, the Association for Computing Machinery, okay, inaptly named this, but this is our professional society. It's one of two. There's also something called the IEEE Computer Society. Okay, most of us in this field are members of both. Students can be members of either also. Um, and the student rates are actually, are actually pretty cheap. Um, in the ACM, there's some SIGs, SIGs, which are uh, um, special interest groups. Okay, and there's one called SIGGRAPH here. Which is the special interest group on computer graphics. Uh, SIGGRAPH has lots of members. What it has is a conference, and the, there, let's see, there's about 50 SIGs total. There's SIG ARC, which is architecture, SIG PLAN, which is programming languages. There's uh, SIG for computer, uh, for uh, IT people on campuses. There's all kinds of these special interest groups that go along. Many of them have conferences, almost all of them have conferences and all. The SIGGRAPH conference is normally two to three times as big as all the other SIG conferences combined. Okay? That's how what happened is all of a sudden um, in the late 1970s, right, the SIGGRAPH conference started to get large, started to have a large exhibition floor associated with it, and um, it peaked about night just before the dot-com demise is that the attendance at this conference in the year before the dot-com demise was 49,995. They never quite reached 50,000. Okay, dot-com dot demise came down and it, this conference went way downhill to about 20,000. Still way very big, okay? And uh, the story with this conference is that it almost bankrupted ACM because ACM was getting so much money back from SIGGRAPH, was funding all their other SIGs with the money that they were getting from the SIGGRAPH conference, okay? And then what happened was SIGGRAPH dropped by to about 40% and almost bankrupted our parent organization of which they had to restructure the budget in order to make things work out, okay? But what happened with this is that, is that uh, SIGGRAPH started drawing in all the all, all the uh, artists community, all the art communities who do computer graphics art, based art, anything with Photoshop, right? Started coming in, and then the entertainment industry came in as well as the scientific community. And um, this was the it's the start. It's still about thirty one, thirty two thousand. It's worked its way back up again. And in addition, it spawned off something called SIGGRAPH Asia a brand new conference called SIGGRAPH Asia, which is given six months after, basically done six months after SIGGRAPH, and uh, is usually held somewhere on the Pacific Rim. 
And so there are now two of them running around the world today. Um, and uh, to get a paper here was uh, very prestigious. Before about 1990, they only had 36 papers that were that were uh, taken here. So you can think of 50,000 participants, and you only get 36 papers in. If you've got these on your record, you're you know you're considered great. And uh, um, the uh, now they accept about 100 papers. Right, or so. So they've tripled the amount of papers. But this is, I wanted to show you how big this organization actually got, this field actually got. And what it did was it started spawning areas off, and now there are tens of conferences here and areas that have spawned off from uh, SIGGRAPH. And the first one is, uh, we all call Y3D, which is interactive. techniques and now it's called it's attached something called games to its title okay interactive interactive techniques and games okay and this conference uh, um, basically talks about how do you do things um, in the games industry where you have an interaction you have a person in the loop right what is graphics there like um, it spawned off something called Visualization, okay. This is, uh, spawned this one off late 80s, spawned this one off early 90s, probably. And visualization is something where you, kind of a light, slightly different problem here, you're all creating data in order to then take a picture of it, produce a computer generated picture of it. You're spending most of your time creating data, which is what graphics almost tends to be now. The visualization people take data generated by other people, like scientists, and try to make pictures out of it, try to help the scientists uh, view their, uh, their own data. And uh, um, this, is a, this is a field that now, um, you know, if you go to a programming language, the major programming language conference, there's probably 400 people there. Visualization has about 900 right now. Okay, so it's, it's actually very big. Um, it's spit off VR which is the virtual reality conference, okay? Um, and uh, this one is normally held, it's actually quite frequently held in Reno. Uh, about every third year it's held in Reno. I don't know why. Um, but uh, um, it's, it's uh, spun off a, you know, quite a large virtual reality community of actually, we have some really good virtual reality stuff here at UC Davis, okay? We have a cave. Um, which is uh, which is a four a cave is a big cube that you can walk into, and we put virtual reality goggles on you, and we put an image on the surface of the cube, on every surface of the cube, and uh, then we put left what we call left eye right eye images up, so these goggles shudder very quickly, and we can tell the exact position of them. They shudder very quickly, like every 60th of a second. So either your right eye is open or your left eye is open, and when your right eye is open, we put the right eye image up, and when your left eye is open, we put the left eye image up, and so everything jumps out in front of you in 3D, basically. Um, and there are various other ways of doing it. There's head tracking elements. There's all kinds of things in VR that we have, and uh, we actually have the guy who now who has the glasses with the extra lens that I explained once that once before, um, which is another VR type um, type of issue, and. Uh, um, there's um, other spin-offs here too, animation, um, has, we've spun off an animation conference uh, from this one, um, and then the modeling stuff has been interesting. There's CAD, which is for computer-aided design, which spun off a SIGGRAPH. There's something called CAGD, which is close, started out related here, but spun off is something called computer-aided geometric design. This is really the curves and surfaces that uh, we've been doing. The NURBS and everything else are, are in this block here. There's um, um, solid modeling. How to do solids. And these have all spun off of SIGGRAPH. And uh, um, there's, uh, I'm going to do one more.
And the newer thing that's, that's about to spin off is about digital photography. Um, and uh, a lot of the uh, things that you have in your camera today, uh, we, now have, we can now produce cameras of which um, your focus is kind of advisory only, okay? That will allow you to focus the image after we actually take the image. You can download it to your own machine and focus it however you like, okay? Um, there are things like this that have come out of SIGGRAPH recently. Um, but all the modeling, all the animation, visualization, everything have come out of, out of uh, SIGGRAPH. And within here, here's one called PVG, which is Parallel Visualization and Graphics. Okay, there's conference in how to, how to do these things in parallel. Um, there's graphics hardware. Oops, I forgot about that one. Oops. Graphics hardware. Um, in the same way, uh, there's graphics hardware. And um, all of these are almost disciplines now of their own. Of their own. There are problems in all of these to study. So that you've just tapped a little tiny bit of, of maybe the interactive part, right, which is, which is uh, doing the Cessna viewer, um, the uh, anim animation, uh, we didn't really do that. You've tapped a little bit of this. Um, you know, you really haven't tapped that much of the graphics world yet. Yet there's this huge world out there. And I'm not even including here the art community, um, which uh, there's, there's uh, some digital art running around. Um, we had a photograph here that's called, that we, we submitted to a digital art show and it, it toured all the country. It was called I for a J. And in a loop, um, we had an I instead of a J inside of our loop. Okay, and it produced a picture that just was just beautiful, but it was absolutely incorrect for what we wanted. But it was so beautiful, we photographed it, sent it out to an art show, and we had it tour the country. Okay, so there's a complete artist community here. There's a complete community in the uh, um, in the uh, um, in in uh, film that goes here. So there's a huge community around here that's that's available. All right. And now there's also uh, starting at SIGGRAPH here. Right, there's also Euro graphics. There's Pacific graphics. There's SIGGRAPH Asia. There's OzGraph. Want to guess that one? Australia, okay. There's all kinds of of, uh, of other groups that have spawned off of SIGGRAPH that have their own their own things, okay. And what I want to do is say that this is a uh, um, that the community here is really quite huge, and um, the visual things we do is expanding into many many areas. So let's see areas here. Real cool stuff, okay? Well, there's uh, these, okay? Um, this actually has a complete GPU inside of it, the iPhone does, graphics processing unit inside of it. And we, uh, I'm part of a group that together with some people at the University of Utah took some things that we did, a real-time rendering system that we did for a PC and just basically ported it to the iPhone. Okay, it now works, you can get a free app, you can download it, okay, it works on the iPhone itself. But all we did was, it just take the same thing we did with, uh, with the, uh, with a PC and the graphics processing unit, and downloaded it to the iPhone. So these things, for the first unit, for the first time ever, are real computers. They have real graphics engines inside of them. And the only thing you have to worry about with these guys is, is uh, it does, they don't have a lot of memory. Yeah, you can't use up too much memory. Um, but what's coming along here is augmented reality. And when we start looking at um, what people are doing with this, what you want to do is you want to take a picture of something and you want to have it give you more information about it, okay? Or you just want to point your iPhone at something and have, you give, have it give you more information. Um, 
For example, um, the wait times at Disney, at the Disney parks, you can point your your thing, your iPhone at the line in front of uh, one of the Disney rides, and it'll tell you the approximate wait time for the ride. Um, this is what this is what's coming as people are want to take pictures or photographs or something or computer graphics augmented something, and um, and put them back into uh, get some more information about things. Um, there's something called there was a movie of this Avatar is coming, which is putting you or yourself into a, either a simulated figure or yourself into a scene. Okay, and manipulating yourself within the scene as if nothing has happened. Okay, as if as if the scene is is uh, um, re as if the scene is realistic. This is a very very big area that's coming along. Um, the uh, um, digital photography. What? Many of us are trying to do, there's a group at Lawrence Livermore and myself that are trying to do this in a small way. What we're trying to do is do computer graphics, the stuff that you've done backwards, okay? You're taking, you're building a model and then you're flying through it with a camera and taking pictures of these things. We would like to take the pictures and reconstruct the models, okay? I first saw this many years ago. Um, when it was approached, I was approached and we didn't do this, they said they had a picture of a Russian satellite taken from the Earth, several pictures from, of it taken from around the planet, and they wanted to reconstruct the satellite. Right, and I just said, you know, no way. I'm not gonna put my hands on that one. But, you know, this whole thing is now, um, we are starting to collect data about the planet by running aerial surveillance craft around, or satellites around, gathering satellite data. I mean, most of you have been on Google Maps or on Google Earth and have seen the satellite data that's coming in. What we're trying to do, though, is actually reconstruct the buildings and all from this data. Um, reconstruct the, uh, the, the automobiles, reconstruct everything from this data. It's a very, very interesting project. And it's, a lot of it's based on digital, on digital photography. Um, so one of the projects we're, we're trying to run with our uh, actual, actually our uh, uh, class next quarter on senior projects is run around this building and take a whole bunch of pictures with your iPhone and then just reconstruct a walkthrough of the building as if you can see on the iPhone exactly where you are right, no matter where you are in the building as if uh, nothing is, as if everything was there. It's, it'll all be pictures of course but it'll be as if everything were there. Um, so this is a reconstruction part And, and that's going to be uh, um, lots of fun. There's something called supercomputing here. That plays a big role, and there's big problems in supercomputing. These are huge parallel processing systems that we have. It used to be uh, 10 years ago, before the dot-com demise, the third largest supercomputer in the world existed at Industrial Light and Magic. Okay, um, they put together the biggest processor in the world at that time, and uh, one of the biggest processors in the world. Um, the national labs kind of dominate this market right now. That uh, um, the uh, they basically put a machine that's four times faster than in a machine every two years, where the speed jumps by and the size of the machine jumps by a factor of four. So I think I may be off by factor four here. I think this year we get the system that has 250, 256,000 processors in it, right? Next, in two years, we get the one that has a million, okay? And the one that's slated to have four million is going to be put in at Lawrence Berkeley Lab, uh, which is kind of nice because it'll be close by and some of us will begin to use it. But how do you use these, these things to do these algorithms, okay? Uh, these machines have a footprint about the size of, I mean, an actual footprint, how big they are, about twice as big as Aggie Stadium out here. Okay, that's how much floor space they take. They're usually built into a room that has a permanent five, five to seven mile an hour wind in the room. 
right, in order to cool them, okay, with, with uh, fans blowing at particular angles in order to cool all these machines, uh, et cetera. But anything that's done here in six to ten years is going to be done almost here, okay? Because this is, um, I bought a machine almost like this in 1992 for a quarter of a million dollars, okay? And it had almost exactly the same power as this did. And so uh, this is what's going to happen. And in your lifetime, there's going to be a lot of fun coming out of these. I think it's going to be a lot of fun coming out of these things. Um, there's a... Uh, In visualization here, in the medical world, is where uh, everybody thought the real advances would be in medicine when this field started. It didn't happen, right, because the devices to gather data from, uh, from, your, from your body aren't good enough. Okay? Now they're producing MRIs that not only will show us uh, different uh, densities within your body, but also will show us flow within your body so we can determine how the blood is flowing through your heart right and determine actually if uh, there are uh, um, there are things going wrong okay uh, there's also another thing up here called security which is always going to be a big thing um, uh, if any of you have been sniffed at the airport, I don't know if you, anybody, any of you have gone through the sniffers they have now, you go in, they blow air at you, and they sniff you right, to see uh, um, if you're going, if, if anything's wrong. Well, everybody's seen uh, uh, Total Recall and Arnold uh, walking through the thing and it's showing a skeleton. Uh, we can actually do that today. Um, they're just scared to put it in the airports because it'll freak everybody out. But uh, we can actually do that today. And so uh, there are many, many uh, new things. And uh, basically anything that's v that has a visual component to it is going to be involved this graphics. It's going to involve putting, an eye, putting a camera somewhere in space, taking a picture of things, right, trying to analyze this picture, etc. cetera. And uh, um, we have, uh, uh, let's see. As a little bit of advertising, let's see. Well, I've got to do one more thing. Ah. Um, most of the engineering areas that you see today involve these, have these two things in, uh, involved. I mean, uh, I've seen the CAD drawings for this. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen the CAD drawings for the vacuum cleaner I have at home. Um, I've seen CAD drawings for automobiles, etc. Uh, there are CAD drawings for Boeing 777. Um, we made a picture of a Boeing 77777 for one of our papers, one of our ray tracing papers, two years ago. Okay, and it contained, uh, we were trying to show how to do things in parallel. Nicely, we needed a big model. So we borrowed the Boeing 777. It had something like 14, 15 million triangles in the picture. It had all the seats, it had everything. Okay, um, but the, uh, the CAD world has latched onto this part. Right, the engineering world has latched onto this, and it's rare to see anything now that's not engineered. Um, over here with the digital photography stuff, many of the problems we are going to get is by observation, um, and we're going to collect data from the air, we're going to collect data from under the water. Uh, one of my former graduate students works for an ocean oceanographic firm in Hawaii. They're collecting data right under the ocean. They have data sam samplers everywhere. Um, you know, all of these things are, are going to be very, very big. We would like to run a digital camera up over Lake Tahoe or San Francisco or some nice city with smog and, uh, you know, look at the environmental data for the places. These are all visual problems, and they're all going to come out of, of this field. So you, you're going to come back to this. Um, when I used to give this lecture uh, a long time ago, I used to also point out that anything that you see on your screen today right, has been invented by the folks that went to SIGGRAPH. And that includes the text, the windows, everything. Right? It was all most of that was invented at Xerox Park, and uh, these were the, some of the people that actually started this whole field. Now um, at UC Davis, uh, we have um, been fortunate enough to build some really big groups here. Um, we have have some people in all of these areas. And we've got uh, uh, and I3D. Oh, graphics hardware up here. And uh, um, we have some people in all of these areas at UC Davis. We've actually been able to build up a really big group.
here in graphics and visualization. And this is why you see us, this is why we have lots of courses here. Um, but John Owens in, in ECE does graphics hardware, and he's really well known for it. Um, especially in doing what we call GP, GPU, general purpose GPU work, right? He's very well known for all of this. Uh, myself, Bernhama, and Kwan Lu Ma all work in the visualization field. And with branches off to other areas, um, I do uh, a lot of basic computer graphics. Um, uh, Haman does a lot of CAD work, right? Um, uh, Ma does a lot of I3D interactive work. So we, we kind of, we're not quite in the same areas. Um, in the animation world, we have Michael Neff, who works uh, half in the art department, half in computer graphics. And we also have Nelson Max here, who has won the Lifetime Award from SIGGRAPH. There's only like 18 people that have ever won it. And, he's, and he was one of the very first animators. In fact, the first time I ever, quote, met him was that I saw a film of his in graduate school, when I was a graduate student, on how to do a very, a, particular theorem in mathematics. And uh, it was the only time I ever understood that theorem. Okay, I do photography. Um, and uh, so this is kind of where this field is going. And I want, I'd like to give you the, I wanted to give you the big picture of what goes on here. It's, it's a very dynamic field. There's lots of things going on in it. You'll come back to it again. Many of you will be forced to work in, in OpenGL again before you're done. Um, but it's, it's something that's going to impact a lot of things because uh, there's a lot of really cool problems in this world that can be treated visually. So, okay, uh, things to remember. Number one, the final exam date is really Friday, and that's when I'll collect your, your assignments. Office hours at the pub, 7 o'clock on Friday at Sudwork. Show up, there'll be some free food, okay, until the money runs out, okay. And uh, what was the other one we did? Oh, and I'm going to give out exams as soon as I sign off here. And no Wednesday, Friday this week. Okay? So, and we will not have discussion this week either. Mm -hmm.